Okay guys, I left you guys with this design and I told you that now we are going to do the boundary and the excitations. Uh, before I go through that, one important thing is when you go to the Maxwell 2D and then you select the solution type, you want to make sure that you are in the eddy current solution. So obviously you have to click eddy current and the Cartesian XY is pretty good. Leave it like that. Press OK. Now um, one thing that you want to do is in the 3D uh, model, um, by default, we have the vector potential boundary, a non-fringing uh, vector potential boundary. What it is, is uh, it basically makes sure that all of the uh, fields that we have inside the boundary, which in this case is the blue region that we have, is going to stay there. It's not going to pass through the boundary. Uh, as you remember from the radiation boundary, we had a different boundaries. We have the radiation boundary, and as I said, the radiation boundary let the fields to leave the, 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 the surface of the boundary, but here we don't have that, and leave it like that, um, that's fine. We have a huge enough region, so nothing bad will happen, okay? So let's go and uh, select the edges of the region, because we want to apply the boundaries, right? So uh, for that, uh, select E on your keyboard so you can uh, select the edges and press control, uh, press and hold basically the control key to select the four different edges of this fellow. Okay, I did that. And what you want to do is you want to right click on that and say, uh, let's go to the boundary and let's go to the vector potential and put the potential boundary of zero for that press OK. So this is our boundary set. So this is good because now if you make the 3D uh, project of the same thing, we are in the same uh, pace. So we can basically compare the results. Um, now let's do the excitations. On the left, I can actually select here. Um, you can right click and say excitation and over there you can say I want to have some current um, left current, let's call it, and uh, I want to have a one amp current, okay? And uh, leave it to be solid because now we can actually do um, to see basically with the eddy current, we can actually see the skin effect and how much resistance we will have in AC, which is good. So let's leave it like that and uh, the, the, the reference uh, directions, put it on negative meaning that it goes inside, okay? Inside to canvas. Press OK. Um, I'm going to do the same thing for the right side uh, with one extra difference and that is um, right current and same, one amp, but I'm going to say it's going to be um, um, actually this is going to be negative and uh, 60 degrees and I have to go back and actually correct what I, myself um, for the so what you do is you go here and basically correct yourself for the left one um, let's make it positive okay so one of them is positive the other one is negative which makes sense because one goes in one goes out okay so we did apply 60 degree of phase difference between these two which is a good thing and uh, lastly, uh, what you want to do is you want to go to the modeler and uh, actually Maxwell 2D and in the excitation, you want to make sure that the set eddy current is set for both of them. So we want to do know what will be the effect of the eddy current on our uh, cables or let's in this call, in this case we call it bus bars, okay? And now we want to calculate the force. Um, the if you want to calculate the force, um, I can tell you that the virtual force can be calculated automatically here. So what you do is you just right click on the parameters, assign a force, and it says what the heck, which is true. Um, so let's click the, the one that you want to see the force on, the left one, and uh, then over here um, assign a parameter to that and it's going to be force um, force for left and um, yeah leave it like that and press OK on that okay that's good 
And lastly, we want to we want to do one force, right? Because the other one is the same. So we we'll get that. And uh, right click on the assign and um, on the analysis, and you can add solution type and the uh, number of pass. You can increase it to be 20 passes, and the percentage error is going to be pretty small. And because you you want to make sure that the forces are converging pretty nice. So um, and these are the parameters. When you have parameters, you basically have a post or secondary calculations. And you have an error, it will accum accumulate on the secondary calculations. And when you're going to plot something that is a secondary calculations, you want to make sure that the viewer first raw data was pretty accurate to get a good accuracy for the second generation calculation, which is the interpretations of the first raw data. So the force parameters is a second generation. Okay, and when you are having parameters, try to increase the accuracy of your raw data that Maxwell will create. And the raw data is J and B. That's it. So make sure that you are uh, making it right. And as I said, 0.01% is pretty good. And um, for the for the uh, for the error, and also um, over here everything is fine. I mean, how much? Uh, refinement this is good oh, this one also you have to change it from the 60 Hertz to 100 and make it kilohertz there we go that is and um, that's fine the rest is okay just press okay oh look at that enable thermal feedback from ANSYS max uh, ANSYS mechanical um, you can you can actually see you can connect these guys to uh, different ANSYS and you can see uh, what are the effects of these forces on the others? You can actually um, see how much acoustic sound is coming out of that because of the loose, uh, you know, uh, fixations. So it's it's pretty nice and very accurate. Okay, press OK. We don't need to do that right now. So press OK, and now you're set and ready for the simulations. Save the work and start the simulations. I'll come back to give you more um, tutorials on how to calculate the, the Lorentz force which is important and uh, then plot them. Okay.